This is, again, not going to be a long video, but not a short one either. Um, not a few seconds or just a clip or anything like that. With everything in the world going on, I feel like it would be very selfish to just post videos about how I'm doing or my mental health or just messages I feel are very important. Um, I still think they matter and I still am going to post the videos that I've pre-recorded and that I still am recording right now and want to record. I just feel like right now the world is at a very sensitive place and to try to completely ignore what is going on and talk about things while still important that are more my personal experience or things along those lines, I feel like this, I feel like I need to take a moment before I do that to at least say what I'm about to say now. Um, everybody matters. Just because somebody's skin is black or tan or olive or white or whatever it may be, it does not make them worth less or more by any means. And we need to stop treating people like they are less than people. I believe because I've been vegan for 23 years and I strongly, strongly, strongly support animals and animal rights and I own an animal rescue. I believe that all lives matter extending out to the animals and to, you know, animals, children, black lives matter, people matter. We are all part of the human race. So I get it. It's easy to look at things and see them as simply hateful or simply wrong on both sides. But just because you might be afraid of what's going on in the world doesn't mean that it wasn't called for. It doesn't mean that it's not justifiable. And it doesn't mean that people don't have a right to be outraged. No life should be treated the way that so many have been treated. I am very much so pro All Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, and Blue Lives Matter. I am going through this, through this case right now with having been sexually assaulted. A lot of the police saved my life and got me resources that are really needed. And I know that they have themselves taken a knee and taken a stand with the Black Lives Matter movement and with the good people out there trying to simply have rights and be heard and not be treated like animals. So I support the police and our justice system that is willing to take a stand for what is a little bit different and not conventional and not necessarily just what our president wants, but for what matters. And right now, the way that especially black lives, but many lives, women, LGBTQ, the way that they've been handled and treated is disgusting. It's deplorable and it's not right. And I do not think all police are bad. I do not think all cops are bastards. I think that there are many good ones and those cops are the ones that are kneeling in silence with the protesters, the peaceful protesters, and absolutely realizing that outrage is just and understandable. So please, please understand that those police officers want, they want what you want as well. They want equality and peace for all of those who want to silence the people, especially the peaceful protesters. That is ridiculous. It's unconstitutional and it's wrong. So please, please be safe out there. Please know that I hear you. I get I have one person and I probably don't matter in the great scope of any of this, but I hear you. And I hear you despite having my own worries, my own fears, my own things going on with medical issues. I have a ton of surgeries coming up. I have, you know, my rapist being a very bad person right now. And I still hear you. I still realize that your issues are more important than mine. And I am absolutely taking a moment to focus on listening to everybody out there who's going through something and who's being emotionally and unfortunately physically harmed by the situation that's at hand right now because it is disgraceful how it has been handled. You matter, you are important, and I hear you, and again, I am one person, I get I don't matter in the scheme of things, but we all matter, and if I can do anything, I will the things that I want to say are if you live anywhere hot or even I live in Wisconsin um, and I travel all over Wisconsin and Illinois for my medical treatment it has been really hot really sunny really really humid out I am getting it 
fixed in my car, but I didn't have air conditioning and I was miserable. My car was getting to over 100. So if you're going out and you're peacefully protesting and standing up for what is right and taking a knee for nine minutes, everything, please bring water, bring sunscreen if you're somebody like myself who burns or who um, I get heat stroke really easy just because of the issues I have in my throat, my nose, with my vocal cords and my voice box fractures that are healed wrong. I have a hard time taking in air. Um, I have to, I'm sure you've noticed, I'm sure it's annoying, I have to almost like gasp in when I'm talking slightly. I've been able to mask it pretty okay, but if I talk a lot, it's very noticeable because um, I have to hold my breath when I talk because of how damaged my airway is from being assaulted. So, I can tell you it's hard to breathe out here, and so please think about that, think and plan for that. I always bring a big case, a huge case of water whenever I drive to medical medical situations, um, appointments, um, rescues to pick up animals, anything. I always, bring, um, I always bring waters and ice packs and stuff like that in a cooler, just so I have stuff in case I see people peacefully protesting or even police officers helping the protesters that obviously are overheated. Just I'm trying to help out the best I can. So please, if you are somebody like me who, despite everything going on, has to go out, please bring things in case you see somebody in need. And um, if you are going out yourself, please try to be prepared because the last thing that we need are is anybody getting hurt. Any of these good people who are just trying to get justice for many, many, too many years of injustice. Please, please, just be careful. I would hate to see more people get hurt than what already are getting hurt during this. And I know that there are people out there who probably don't like me. I'm a tattooed, very outspoken person who's, I talk about a lot of controversial things, and I've been through something really ugly that I'm being very blunt and transparent about. But just know that even if you don't like me, even if dislike my videos or you think that I'm the ugliest, stupidest, most useless person in the world, your life still matters and I still want you to be safe. I still want what's best for you. Please, please, from the bottom of my heart, whether you like listening to me or not, just be safe because we don't need any more good people that are just trying to get justice for the great injustice being done all over the world and especially right now in America there's a lot of ugly injustices being done. I don't want any of you, whether you agree with me or not, to go through anything bad or to be hurt or to be harmed. So please be safe. Just know that I care about you. I am listening. I hear you all. I do not think that animals should be brought into this period because they don't have a choice. They don't have a voice or a stance in it. And the same with young children. Not 18-year-olds, 16-year-olds, 15-year-olds even, but young children who don't have a voice. They don't have a choice. I think that they, that if things do get out of hand or violent, just please remember who you're mad at. It's not the innocent animals, and it is not the young children who are there, you know, without really knowing or being able to understand the situation. So I beg of you, if things get violent, please make sure to direct that at those that should be directed towards and not towards innocent people, you know, innocent tiny children and animals who have no say, or towards the people that are helping your message and trying to, you know, trying to support you. I think that, you know, we should really focus on those that are causing more harm than good. Please don't be silent right now. Don't, don't be afraid of how the government is handling things. Peacefully stand up for what's right because if we back down now, this was pointless. I don't think looting and rioting and stealing from small businesses and local businesses is right, but I think standing up, being outraged, protesting, marching, taking a knee for nine, I think all of this is so important and it's so needed right now. And you are valid, you are important, you matter. Don't don't let fear of how the world is handling this cause you to be silenced, but also don't let it cause you to be outraged and hurt animals or little kids that have no say and no choice on what side they're standing near. 
is they don't understand it and they're being brought there by parents or by you know people who are you know who own the animals the law enforcement or protesters or anybody who's bringing them and having them be involved they are helpless in it so all I ask is for compassion for those and to please just stand strong and make sure that you're heard you know it's I know not everybody's listen, everyone is listening but I think one of the most powerful things was just the silence the kneeling in silence for the amount of time that sadly a very good person lost his life in and putting that into perspective for people. I think that's a very powerful message. And I think that if more people, especially people who aren't necessarily the quickest to agree with your side or the movement going on, I think if they hear and see things put into that light where they can literally understand how many seconds, how many minutes something took and how wrong that was and how they can see that it's a very true and important message and not everybody is just you know rioting and burning down people's you know businesses and small businesses who are on the same side it's not all wrong and riots and badness a lot of this is important and a lot of the outrage all of the outrage is understandable so especially the more times we put things into perspective like that where it's a calm look you know how would you feel even just kneeling for nine minutes now think about how he felt in a much worse situation for that amount of time. I think that's really moving and going to get through to people. So please don't be silenced and please think about how you want to portray your message just so we can actually make a difference with this in the best way possible. And again, for young kids and animals, they don't deserve any backlash from this because, like I said, they don't have a say. I will get back to, not that this matters right now, but just to put it out there, I will get back to posting my videos and to posting the things, especially updates about the trial, my surgeries, which I'm really scared about with a few coming up, and what's been going on from, I just started a new uh, speech therapy because of, I'm using the, there's vocal cords and then there's like false vocal cords, I'm using my false vocal cords up because of how damaged my voice box and vocal cords are. Um, so I'll explain some of that that's going on. I'll explain the updates, anything that I know, anything moving forward, how I've been feeling, um, the health issues I still am facing with all of this, and the things that have gotten way better. Especially in physical therapy, uh, Julie Edwards has been a lifesaver. And Dr. Lynn, Dr. Clean, just Dr. Allen, everybody has been send. Um, I'm so thankful for the people in my life right now because they have saved me and I owe them everything. Um, Dr. Berlin, um, my therapist and counselor, uh, Mr. Kosky and uh, Miss Layton, they're amazing. I don't want to say their first names. I normally would, but I don't know if they're okay with it. Just everybody has been amazing. And the police that are good at just and that are standing up for what I went through and the trauma I'm still facing on a daily basis because of being uh, sexually assaulted with force and battered. I, I am so thankful for the good people around me and I do want to spread the message that staying silent and staying in those type of situations is the most dangerous thing you can put yourself in and there are ways out safely without being life ending and without having to suffer as long as I did. So I do think that's still a very needed, important message. I'm still being affected daily because of what happened to me. And I still have surgeries coming up in at the end of this month and the beginning of July. So please, if you have any extra thoughts or kindness, please keep me in them because I'm very scared. Because it's very serious, especially the ones towards my face. I had just to update very little. I had a scope that was put down... Um, put down my nose all the way down my throat towards my stomach um i'm gonna show you guys why i am pausing now if i can't look at the little ducks well geese i should say look at them oh my goodness those poor babies get across safely that is so sweet i had to pull pull over obviously because there's no reason they should get hurt because i'm driving but anyways um to the point 
um, I'm very scared about a lot of stuff coming up, and it's all 100% because of the forcible sexual and physical assault, and it's awful, and I'm so thankful to get out and be out, but it is still heavy on your heart and mind when you go through something like that, and I want people to understand what it's like to go through, and the people who are going through things similar now, or domestic abuse, whatever it may be, I want them to know they're not alone, and that there's a future, and there's hope, and even if it's months of surgeries, and physical therapy, and visits from doctors, and specialists, and uncomfortable treatments, it's worth it, because when they put that scope down, it was painful, and I refuse even extra strength Tylenol, like, I won't take anything, so for me, I felt everything, it was awful, whatever, but... I could look on a camera and see, holy cow, that's extreme damage. And have somebody look at it and go, yeah, look, this is obviously caused by this. This is, you know, this is what we can do. This is what we can't do. These are the things that, you know, the steps we're going to have to take. It was almost validating to see that, like, wow, you can look inside, like, of my throat and see that I was strangled. You can see the healed incorrectly damage from that. And there is answers, there's hope, but there is also very concrete, hard proof for if this does go into a lengthy trial that, you know, the proof is just overwhelming. And that is such a validating feeling and such a strengthening moment. So even if it's scary to go to doctors, even if that's a very traumatic, it's for my PTSD having something jammed up my nose. And I only have one side of my nose that works right now because my septum is, they said, to rewind, they said when your septum is deviated, they show you a picture and it's like looped to a side internally. And that's normally not how it looks, it's not as bad. But in my case, it's identical to the picture, it is as bad because it's completely crushed on one side internally. And I'm gonna see if I can get copies of either the camera pictures or if I can actually get a picture. I've managed to get like a shadowy picture of it, like myself, but I want to get a really good one to kind of show to you guys. But it's scary how badly damaged it was and how, no kidding, I can't breathe. So basically, it was going through the only good nostril I have, cutting off almost all breathing and down my throat, which is really damaged. So it already can barely take in air. So I felt like I was suffocating and it was scary, but it was still one of the most validating moments of my life to see, holy cow, the deepest, most protected internal part of my throat was still drastically damaged and still affecting me months and months and months later and still deserves treatment and help and hope and a future and I deserve justice and so do a lot of people going through a lot of things so I want to keep spreading the message of even if it's hard even if the things we go through are hard and awful and scary it's worth it it's worth it to stand up and be brave it's worth it to fight for what is right whether it's to against domestic violence and sexual assault, or whether it's for All Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, against sexual assault, against anything, discrimination, stand up for what's right, because people matter. We are all part of the human race. We all matter, and this is ridiculous that we're so divided when all we want is equal rights and equality. You all matter, and I am doing my best to hear you all. So I will stop talking about myself, because again, there's more going on in this world than me. And even though, yeah, I'm still being affected by stuff, I wanted to take a moment to at least let you know I see you, I hear you, and I love you all so very much. And I am so thankful for you guys for loving me and supporting me because it helps me feel a lot less alone, especially with these scary things. Thank you. I love you guys. Be safe. Be wise. Please don't go out alone, especially if you have anything like I do with PTSD, don't go out there alone, don't, you know, make sure to bring water, be prepared, be safe, but don't be silent, and don't be silenced, I love you guys, please know, I hear you, you will be heard, things will get better, and I'll be back very soon, just trying to keep people updated and spread a positive message about the things I'm fighting for, but I'll also be checking in with you guys about everything that's going on in the world. And a very quick side note, just because we're outraged, just because things are going on, doesn't mean COVID-19 is gone. And yes, maybe if a lot of people got it, it wouldn't be a big deal. But as someone who is compromised with all of the things going on in my life, 
and as someone who has little kids at home and also has my two grandparents at home who I'm trying my best to help out and trying my best to do things for, it is terrifying for me personally to to see how many people are in contact with each other because it's very scary to think of the spreading of things. So practicing basic, I wear a mask, wear gloves, change them every 15 minutes to a half an hour if they're disposable, uh, wash your hands, uh, take off your clothes the moment you get home and shower, things like that. Just please, please still practice these basic things because it is still very real and alive. And the biggest fear that I have other than, of course, hurting directly people that matter to me, like my grandparents who raised me and they are my parents, or my children, or me, my life being lost after fighting so hard to keep it. Um, other than those things that are very scary, my biggest fear is some people don't know that they're compromised. Some people don't know what's going on internally because things aren't super active or they seem like basic, like by the sniffles or a cold or something, whatever, and they don't realize they have a bigger problem that makes them compromised or that makes them a bigger risk for this. And then they're exposed because you're fighting for what's right and equality and you end up losing your life because of it. That terrifies me. So please know that even if things seem like, oh, well, it won't affect me, it could still affect the elderly people, and they matter, and it could still affect you, because you might not know everything going on internally, just like, I knew I had a lot of pain, I knew I had a lot of stuff that got very hurt, and very damaged, because of what all happened to me, um, but I also didn't realize everything, and to the extent it was, and it's scary, so please be safe, just wear a mask, be respectful of distancing, bring sanitizer, wash your hands, things like that, just so you're safe. And I think as much as it's not talked about the elderly, back in the day, especially when I was younger because I was raised by my grandparents, so I had like great, great, great aunts. People who were almost 100 years old, some of them over 100 years old, were huge factors in my just growing up life as people who lived with us and people who mattered and people who we listened to. And I got to hear their stories and how they lived and the things they saw. Even if you study everything, we didn't see it, we didn't live it. And so even if maybe they think a little slower or have a worse memory because of time and age and wear and tear on the body and the mind, they still have knowledge that even if we study it, we can't have to that degree. Every person from a child to somebody in over 100 years old has something to offer and something we can learn from them, whether we dislike what they stand for or not, whether we think they're smart or not, everybody has something. And I think that it would be really tragic if we lost a lot of elderly people, which we will and have because of this. And I get a lot of people don't understand how important they are, but they, they've seen things that, they've seen things like this. They've seen movements like this. and. They could actually probably be very helpful right now. My grandparents very strongly believed that all lives mattered and black lives mattered. And when things were going on when they were younger, they stood up for that and they believed in that. And they can really give some crazy, interesting insight into how similar things are now. They're important people and just because they're older doesn't mean that they're worthless or their thoughts are worthless or that they're not as up to date or as smart because we can't understand how different this must be for them and what a culture shock and a world shock this is. And they, especially with what's going on now, can really give an insight onto how things like this caused positive change in the past and the sadness around it. I mean, they are so important. So yes, I get it that a lot of people don't have the love they should for the elderly, but please think of them too. Even if you aren't compromised or you're not around, a lot of people that you feel like would be compromised from COVID-19, it's still very dangerous to the elderly and they are very important. And especially the good, you know, all lives matter, black lives matter, people who have been there through all of the fights for this movement. They are so important right now. It's, it's not even funny. So please consider them too. They're very important. I love my grandparents. I would die for either one of them right now if I had to. And I don't want them to get hurt just because, you know, we didn't take the time to wash our hands or something like that. So just remember that 
all lives do matter. We are all part of the same race, the same species, and all animals matter too. We're all beings with hearts and empathy and kindness and love. Um, and other than a very select few very evil people, a few serial killers, the person who sexually assaulted and tortured me, other than those very sick individuals, all people do matter. I, I just don't want to see us lose people that have firsthand seen things that we couldn't even understand other than reading it or researching it, which from my, in my personal belief, being hands-on means so much more. With horseback riding, I've seen people who read and read and read and research, and they go and get a horse, and they just, they're very toxic in that environment because they're, they don't have any natural understanding. They haven't learned how to act around them, how they, how their energy affects them. They just read a book or read books or even dozens of books and articles and studied. Whereas I read a lot too and studied, um, but I also took riding lessons from 16 different people for over 20 years. And it was almost every day growing up that I went out by the horses and learned how to feed and how to care and how to ride and how to tack and everything, how to handle horses with different health problems, different mental problems, abused horses, skittish horses, different breeds. It was all hands on and then you took your homework with it home and studied and that mixture is so beneficial. So these people, the reason I'm using that example is these people lived through it. They saw it firsthand and we're just reading about it. No matter how much you understand the book when you're put in the situation, it can be totally different and you can be underprepared. Um, so these people have lived through this before and they know the things they did wrong, the things they did right, the things that helped, how to survive through it, how to get your message across, everything. They've seen it and at least know their perspective from it and how they got through it and how they made it here today and how they would handle it again, how they did handle it, what went wrong, what went right. So I think we have to value them too because they don't, they don't have a voice so often and it breaks my heart because they deserve one. There's no age that comes around where all of a sudden you hit a button and you become less valuable. And they're treated like that and that's wrong. I'm going to be, if I make it that long, I'm going to be elderly one day. And so are you. And I really don't want one day people to just think, oh, you hit this number. Well, now your intelligence is expired because that's not fair. No age race, color, nothing should change, but we're all human beings. Again, I'm going to wrap this up because this short video has become a long video, but I'm just so scared that so many good people trying to fight for justice and what is right are going to lose their lives needlessly because we've already had too much needless death. And it saddens me because people like my abuser, um, because of COVID, he, got, he went from being remanded to getting thousand dollar bail and I know other people who are going through things like I am that have had things like that happen it's like the bad people are getting protected and our government has been acting the same way in a lot of cases and we do need to stand up for what's right on all aspects so please please know that your voice is being heard and that we all do matter you'll be in my hearts you'll be in my positive thoughts and I'm here if I can do anything at all to help or to better anybody, please. Please, just hang in there. The world is a scary place, but you matter, you're important. And one day, believe it or not, things will be okay. And this will all be worth it.